All right, all right, all right. This is Jared from Crypto Plan. How is everyone going? And uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, the portfolio is growing, and yeah, it's it's happy days. And uh, I just wanted to do this quick video solely because I wanted to show people things that I've learned. Um, I'm fairly new to, I guess, chart reading and and or investing. So I'm on a steep learning curve, but I feel like I'm uh, tapping into the right resources. So I wanted to kind of touch base on a few things that I've learned and I guess recommend maybe a few books and a few people to follow um, to also start learning if you're into chart analysis. So I guess firstly, uh, I'll do some shout outs. Um, Blockchain Backer, I would have learned a lot from. So if you haven't heard of him, he mainly focuses on the XRP and the Bitcoin charts and a few other coins, but mainly on XRP chart. Um, learn a lot from him, especially about Fibonacci retracements. Um, there's Patrick Karim. Uh, he does a lot of gold and silver charting but you know macro charting goes back hundreds of years and has a looks looks at breakouts and he's got lots of youtube videos uh which tell you about um the things that he's doing uh which is spotting you know monthly defined breakouts which is what i'm going to talk about today and then um there's a bunch of books called market wizards that i've read that you know discuss different traders uh techniques and I guess that's very important to decide what your thing is, you know, as in, are you going to be trading on an hourly chart or are you going to be doing the macro trading, long-term trading, buy, hold, you know, buy low, sell high, are you shorting, longing? So understanding what different people have done in the past to make good money and good returns um, and, and seeing which of st which stories vibe with you, you know, whether it's stocks, cryptocurrencies, you know, commodities, uh, you know, uh, options, trades, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, market wizards. And there's actually a more recent one, which has some call, more kind of solo guys that are doing it on their own, which is pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to get into the charts because that's what this is all about. And I'm showing you how I've been spotting, I guess, undervalued coins at the moment, because that's what it's all about. Um, so basically, if you're going on a monthly chart, um, you're looking for a trend line, especially when there's been a, a, a definite bear market, which we know with cryptocurrency that the bear markets are defined by the Bitcoin correction from its all-time high and generally all the alts follow immediately. Um, so Game Credits, which is the chart here, uh, is the one that has done it the most recently. So most altcoins have broken out of their long-term downtrends. Uh, so game credits was one that I'd found that it was still undervalued. And I'm just going to point out a few things on this chart that I was looking for. So I guess I'd, I'd had this coin on my radar when I was doing like, uh, you know, altcoins that could 100x um, that had previous history inside the, the last bull run. So game credits was one of the ones I found that it was on... Um, that it was on a particular, you know, particular uh, website that went historically and showed you the top, you know, 100 coins or whatever. And so Game Credits was one of them. And so then I look at the asymmetry. So I'm like, where is it now and where is it to all time high? So uh, back then, I think it was about four cents. So if we went, uh, grab the price range thing, uh, is that what we want? Yeah, price range. So let's go to four cents there and to all time highs, it was looking pretty juicy uh, in the range of 80x, 100x, depending on whether you use Wix or not, um, which was pretty juicy. So it was on my radar, it was on my watch list and I was like, wasn't sure whether I'd pull the trigger. I hadn't done much research on it. But then, you know, as time went by, I was like, okay, so I'm making four to five X on certain projects. And I'm like, mm, there's, and then they're stalling. And I'm like, well, where should I put it? Game credits came on my radar again. And I started doing a little bit of research into it. And I figured like, it's an altcoin. It's been around in the past. Most altcoins participate in the bull runs. Um, it's active. It, you know, it's not doing any crazy great things. You know, it's not you know, popping any, 
um, crazy news, but it's just doing what it does. You know, it, uh, it's a coin that um, is used for gaming, you know, in the gaming world. And um, it's solid. It, it's stuck the test of time. It's been around since 2014. So there's no reason why it's going to go away anytime soon, right? You know, there's only two or three actual gaming tokens. So it's not like the, the market's flooded with them. So I thought it has every right to break out and reach its all-time high again. So I started investing and I was watching it kind of go between, and this is where I'm kicking myself a bit. I was watching it go between like four and five cents, four and five cents, four and five cents, and then, you know, up to six cents and then back down to five cents. And I was like, geez, I should should set in a buy order for four cents and just see if I can snatch it. And I never did that. But anyway, I think I started accumulating at six cents. So I saw that there was this monthly range of between four cents and nine cents. So I was like, well, it needs to break out of that to prove that it's bullish. But we've also got this downtrend line, you know, so we've got a wick there, a wick there, a wick there. And then we've, you know, in uh, January, we just had the wick there kind of test that breakout, but then fall back, right? So this month, we needed to break past that line. And because, you know, we'd gone so far down, you know, it could have gone sideways, it had every right to go sideways, but um, it broke out, you know, and, and it's only broken out in the last few days, actually, which is super duper, because I, 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 like I say, I started accumulating at six cents, it went up to seven cents, I start, you know, added a little bit more, went up to eight cents, added a little bit more. So it was kind of, I think what they call it is pyramiding in, you know, once you get these kind of breakouts. And then I think I've had this 15 cent lineup here is where I'll accumulate until, but I'm kind of happy with what I've got at the moment. So um, if it makes a pullback back down to the nine, eight, nine cents again, I think I will add some more um, if any of my other old coins have quadrupled or something like that I might do the trade down um, so that's what we were looking for one we were looking for break out of the downward trend line and two we're looking for that break of that range line so Peercoin has officially now broken out of its downtrend it's in that uptrend it's in that um, that zone uh, where a lot of the altcoins are going which is back up towards its retracement levels you know kind of somewhere around here toward hitting its uh three year moving average i believe or is it uh what do we look at what's that red line there again no that's a 200 close so 200 month close no 50 month close um so we're not actually on the monthly chart at the moment anyway that doesn't matter uh because the main thing is that it's broken out now the other signal that you can look for on the monthly chart is an increase in volume. So you can see all the way along here and we will kind of put a line there. And that was kind of the, you know, they were even the peaks. That's not even the average volume. I think the average volume is probably more like, you know, somewhere around here. Right. So we can see straight away there that besides August 20, 2020, um, we'd been well below average volume. And then the fact that January peaked up again, but the price didn't really move is an indicator because when volume increases and price doesn't, then price generally follows, especially when it's a green candle, obviously. Um, and then, you know, what, what's happened February is volume has massively increased and everyone's kind of been, you know, not everyone, but enough people have been seeing that this is one of the last ones to break out. Um, that's, you know, had a previous old, system, old season. They're going, this is undervalued. We want to get on in this. And then everyone's jumped on the train. Now, I think earlier today or yesterday, it kind of pumped to 15, pulled back down again, and then it's kind of reclaimed that again. So um, if we look at the the daily or even the four hourly, is it? Yeah, so you can see, you can see there that uh, this morning it pumped all the way up to 15, back down, closed the candle at 11, and then it's kind of stepped its way up again and reclaimed that. So there was a bit of a pump and dump or uh, maybe a few people that were in it at higher prices are like, woohoo, I can get out. Um, but then I think the markets decided that it still wanted to get back up to that 15 cents, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, I guess, you know, it's a bit a bit easier to see there on the daily what's been going on, you know. So I've had this kind of downtrend line that we needed to break. Uh, 
ranging in this range and then it's just creeped its way out of there and then that kind of big candle there so like i say 15 cents is not it's still not the worst buy target if you're you're actually not in game credits i mean there's not not many altcoins out there where you can still get 50 x to all-time highs um from where they are right now you know so and and i guess quickly we'll go into some of those coins because Game credits was one of those unique opportunities and it was risky and I had people in the comments kind of saying, why would you do that? There's no, you know, there's no, um, there's no news. They're not doing anything. And it's just kind of, it's just markets, you know, like it's, there's no difference between a stock that's doing nothing. I mean, a stock that does something that the fundamentals of the company haven't changed, you know, like, like for example, the game credit, the game stop thing, you know, like the price went par parabolically up because of the market, not because the company actually changed anything fundamentally. Um, and uh, there's probably numerous cases in history where that happens, you know, like, and it's happening right now in the stock market that tech, stop, st tech stocks are in a bubble and they're way overvalued compared to what they are, but that, that is what it is. And, and that will happen to cryptocurrencies again. They'll get way overvalued and then they'll come back to reasonable value or undervalued and then they'll be overvalued again because they're in the early stages of adoption. And that's what happens in markets. They're very volatile because they've got low market caps. But anyway, that's, um, that's a whole other topic. Uh, I don't want to make this one run too long, but I'm just going to go up the list of some of the other coins that I've been invested in that have had this breakout recently. So Dash, once again, um, had this kind of all-time high marker trend line that needed to be broken out. So there was this good accumulation zone here, which I didn't quite get into, but I think I got into this hundreds one. So it had already broken out technically when I got in, but there was a nice kind of still accumulation zone there. Um, before this really big breakout, you know. So if we go back to that monthly chart, um, you know, we can see that, uh, you know, we, based on the same kind of set of rules, is that we've got a, a breakout that needed to be defined. So it was out of an up to uptrend. So I guess ideally getting into Dash, the best, the best asymmetrical time to get in was... Uh, in and around October um, when it was 60, 70 cents, um, uh, 60, 70 dollars and then November it broke out and then it's kind of gone up sideways and then fully up again recently uh, and then there was a good, uh, you know, in this zone there was a good kind of 20x to all-time highs which was like I say the asymmetry, you know, you might, you had your, your floor of resistance here around 60 so, you know, it kind of would have found support here at 60 if you had a board in at 100 even, which, you know, it's like a 30% loss, 40% loss uh, if it went all the way down to there, or it can 20x your money. So, it's huge asymmetry there when you're buying in these zones. Um, and then once again, uh, we've got this kind of average volume, and then bang, you know, November it goes higher. December, higher volume, but a little bit of selling. January, massive volume, massive volume. And this, I guess January was the month that was the indicator. Massive bu selling, buying volume as well as selling volume, but the price stayed there in that doji candle. That was the kind of, all right, it's going to explode, you know. So that was that prime opportunity to get it there at the hundreds um, and then have it go up in the next month to 300, you know. So you could have three extra money in under a month. ZRX, so once again, we're on a monthly chart. ZRX had its breakout pretty early on there in May, I believe, because there was this trend line here that was to be broken. Big wick out of there. Um, closed the month above the line, started the month above the line, and then it continued on out. Um, went up to a, a new kind of high and then back down. I was lucky enough to accumulate in this zone and then see this last couple of months of breakout and then have rolled 50% of my position in um, ZRX or OX um, downward. So once again, using the volume thing, you know, we've had that average volume. May was when you saw the big spike in volume on the monthly. So if you had have got in uh, in June, 
you would have seen a nice big profit. Um, yes, you would have retraced a bit, but you probably would have had a chance to reaccumulate again and then see it go two or three X again. So um, ZRX was another one that you could have used this technique of trend line breakout, um, you know, breaking out of a range as well, you know, that 30, 35, 40 cent range. Um, and then it heading on out of there and, and obviously the volume indicator as well. EOS, so this has kind of just happened um, this month as well. So it was kind of a bit laggard. Uh, so like I said, I, I put my some of my ZRX into EOS before this pump. So it's kind of done well for me. Uh, and once again, trend line, need to break out of that trend line. Tested the trend line in August, retraced, retraced. Broke out of the trend line in November, pulled back, reversed that, all that uh, gains into December, you know, tested it again, wicked out of it in January, pulled back, and then naturally, um, well, not naturally, but uh, eventually in February, it decided to do its big move um, once, once it had grinded its way into the bottom of this triangle, you know, so, uh, you know, if we use that as the kind of baseline there of that support line, you know, that when these bear markets grind into these triangles like there's well, there's one or two things it can do it can break out on the upside or it can fall lower right so but because there'd been a solid defined support line all along um the tendency for these things especially knowing we're going to a bull market is that they break out um, when they grind into these triangle wedges right um and then the final one well a final one is peer coin so once again just recently broken out in the last few months. Uh, big massive wick there all the way down here. So uh, November was the kind of defined breakout. Um, and you can see that there's been opportunities because of those wicks. Um, you know, and the price has been tug of warring all through these months that you could have still got in at very decent price points. But you can see that it always closed above that downward trend line and we have that upper resistance and we have that uh, lower resistance there. So once again, entering at 20 cents, asymmetrical trade, it could have dropped as low as 16 cents. You know, even entering at 30 cents, dropped as low as 60 cents. So you could have lost 50% if you didn't have a stop, but the asymmetrical gain would have been 30x. So... Um, once again, great time to be getting in in this range between 16 and 29 cents. I think it's kind of moved a little bit. Still, uh, I guess, peer coin, you could potentially, oops, and I don't even need to do that. You know, you've still got a 17x to all time highs from here. Uh, maybe not quite 17x where we are now, like 16x. So if it, if it was to reach all time highs of that $10 range, uh, 16x 17x maybe so still a good trade um still hasn't fully retraced to any of the fibonacci zones but um yeah like like i say those supreme buying opportunities or those super undervalued asymmetrical trades where there's very little risk for a lot of return is in in these zones you know at the bottom or the reversal of the bear market into the bull market and then i guess finally for those of you that um are into XRP and I don't do XRP as much anymore because everyone looks at the XRP chart so I don't feel like there needs to be another one uh, doing it and there you know the, this one is a little bit confusing in a way because uh, it has had some of that action with the uh, SEC and whatever but yeah so once again there was a, a trend line breakout in November a retracement back to retest that breakout and then January it defined that breakout. Now you could potentially pull this line here and say, um, you know, this this would be now the breakout line that we want to see, that we want to see it close above that for the month, which is 60, and I believe that's the case. I think if this closes above 60 this month, the next month is going to be huge. So if you're into that short-term trade of like 1x to, you know, 
I mean, 2x, 3x, 4x, whatever it is, uh, whatever actually happens. But I think the target is kind of 230 to 250 maybe $3 in the next big move. Uh, to see it close above 60 cents would be like buy, go all in and just, you know, go to the upside. But I guess the downside of a trade like that is the the asymmetry is not there as much because because we're so far away from the the bottom or the the reversal here of you know so this 22 to 17 cent zone or even 25 to 20 to 17 cent zone where it was a really good buying opportunity a real asymmetrical trade um so there's still some risk up here you know you never know with the whole the case going on but i think the numbers say it the volume says it that you know i think because we've come up retest, I think any weak hands have been sold out. So this is all solid buyers, solid buyers again, you know, people accumulating, slowly accumulating, and then 60 cent close this month, bullish, bang, you're going to see the next candle kind of testing those all time highs, I believe. So that is a couple of charts that I've traded, that I've seen the asymmetry, that I've seen the, the gains to all time high, and I've seen that we need to break out of trend lines, we need to break out of ranges, and then bang, you know, that's when you see the big move. So uh, 20 minute video there. I hope everyone got a little bit out of that. You know, I don't think this video is going to do well with the algorithm because it's kind of general uh, advice kind of video. But hey, I like to put this stuff out there because it reinforces what I've been doing and that it's been the right thing and that, um, you know, th these are kind of real simple techniques to actually find the trade that is going to make you the most percentage gain. You know, it's not about following the hottest coin or what's the latest news on Twitter. It's about going, well, this one's undervalued. Eventually it's going to find an equilibrium in the market um, to where everything is, which most things are at their all time highs. So if you can find anything at the moment that's under all time high, it's a, it's a better trade than something that's already reached all time highs. So I've been Jared, this has been Crypto Plan. Please like and subscribe and all of that. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.